In this video, we're going to talk about deploying an app to the Google Play Store. So, we'll talk about the different steps that are required to build an app and deploy it, and then we're actually going to deploy an updated app. This is the Plant Places Mobile page. This is the developer console for Plant Places Mobile. Uh, the, it currently says release 5.1. I initially released what was version 2 in February uh, February 3rd of 2013 after honestly testing it for about a year and looking for quirks. I released an update in around February 23rd or actually 26th I believe it was. Immediately found a bug and fixed it and released another update and that's what we now have 5.1. So I'm recording this on September 27th of 2013 so about seven months later. Now you can really get nervous before deploying an app because app quality is very important. Remember that we say there are three things, uh, there are three big parameters in software development. Quality, functionality, and time. Pick any two. So you can have quality and functionality but the trade-off is it's going to take a long time. You can have uh, functionality in, in, in a short time but then quality is going to suffer. You can have quality in a short time, but then functionality is going to suffer. In this day of agile mobile development, the one that I would not compromise on is quality. So I would compromise on features first uh, and not on quality and time and try to get a useful product out to market. And then, in keeping with a scrum or agile process, just do frequent updates that add a little bit more functionality each time. Now you don't want to overload, overload your users with frequent updates, updates that are too frequent, but you want to make sure they're high quality. Because if they're not, if you have quality issues, that will ref reflect on the ratings that you get on the Play Store from people who think it's bad quality, and you can't get rid of that. So quality is important because your user ratings are important. So if you take a look here, we have the quality guidelines. I have a separate video that talks about these, so I won't talk about them now, but I strongly recommend looking at the quality guidelines early. Don't wait until it's too late. When I first deployed my app, I was ready to go. Uh, this is back around January, February, and then I thought, well, I should really look at the quality guidelines before I release it. And I realized there were many quality guidelines that I was violating. I wasn't certain that all of my screens were swapping orientation properly, and I found several of them were not. You're not allowed to redefine what the back button does. You're not allowed to make a duplicate back button, and I had made some duplicate back buttons. Uh, so there were a lot of quality things I realized that I was violating, and, you know, I want to be careful not to do that. So you definitely want to review these quality guidelines before you deploy but you also really want to be familiar with the quality guidelines before you even start developing because if not it's going to be wasted effort. So start with the quality guidelines and then you're going to want to test on multiple uh, on multiple app versions. I tested <clears throat> I tested on two different emulators. This is an emulator for uh, API version 18 and then I have one that's still loading over here for API version 8. Uh, okay, and you want to test for at least the range of emulators that you have specified in the Android manifest. So let's take a look at that. Android manifest. And what we'll see is that we have we have a um, minimum SDK version. 8 is roughly 2.2 uh, and uh, I, I don't I never remember all the different dessert names, Eclair and Donut and all that. I never, I know the numbers, not the names. And then 18, as of today, 18 is the most recent, or about the most recent. So I'm testing on one device at an API level of 8, a different device with an API level of 18, and I've tested on several others um, during the development cycle. Now, there are certain things where the emulator is not as good as real life. I've had a lot of trouble getting the camera to uh, to use the webcam. I have to use the camera's emulator. Um, 
there are some things I, I, I'm just having a lot of difficulty emulating. So you absolutely want to test it, on, test it on hardware as well. You probably have some friends who have some differing Android devices. Sign them up. <clears throat> you can probably get some used Android devices without a service contract on eBay or a site like that. So try those out. Uh, I tried mine on my device on an Android tablet that I have, and then I had a friend try it on his phone with a slower network than I have. So, after having the app out for about seven months, you start to realize quirks that you have in there that really drive you nuts. One of the quirks that I had was on the search by color, you could click a color and it would just give you back a text list of all of the plants that match that color, but it wouldn't give you pictures. So one of the updates that I'm doing in this release is it will show you a text list of plants and then it will come through and download photos and there we go and refresh the view with photos. So a much more user-friendly perspective. Remember the three big tenets of Android development. Amaze me, enchant me, and simplify my life. So if I made the user do an extra click here, that would be complicating the user's life. It'd be a lot easier if the user can just look at the pictures and say, oh yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. So that's the big reason for this release. Okay. So what we're going to need is we're going to need a key store. And uh, in the background here, I'm, well, I don't recall where I saved mine, so I'm looking for it. We need a, a key store that we get uh, to basically say who we are as an author. And don't lose that. That's what verifies that you are the one who made this APK. Okay, so don't lose that. Okay, so we need a key store so that we can sign our uh, app. I already got one. I got one back when I uh, initially created Plant Places Mobile and, and was getting it ready for deployment, which was actually in the summer of 2012. So that next six months was just a, just a, a crazy test period. Um, I focused on functionality and quality, but not time. In hindsight, I probably should have focused on, functional, on uh, quality and time and not functionality. I kind of wanted to do everything, and because of that, I was so worried about quality, it took a lot of time to get it released. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to go, and let's see, it's hard to see this on the limited monitor that we have. I need to choose Android Tools and that's probably all going to appear off screen. Just one second. Okay, let me move the screen down a little bit. I right click, uh, I choose Android Tools and then Export Signed Application Package. And what this means is it is going to associate my key store with this app I'm about to deploy. Okay. You see also, by the way, you might notice I'm using Google with Mercurial. I'm sorry, I'm using uh, Eclipse with Mercurial. Uh, so I can keep a revision history of my app. Definitely a good idea. Okay, we start by saying the project, Plant Places Android. And, oh, there's my key story. You know, here I was searching for it over here. Don't need to search for that anymore. Uh, it points me to my key store. Okay. So, listen, I already got this. I won't cover how to do that in this lecture. It's easy, easy enough to search on that and figure out how to get a key store. But a key store is something where you just verify who you are so that when you create an APK, you're saying that I'm the original author. And then the Google Play Store is going to look at that to make sure that the original author is the one who's creating this update. So we're going to start with the key store and we're going to give it a password. Okay. Um, by the way, I said APK. The APK is the built package that we're going to deploy to the Play Store. So what we're doing now is we're building the APK and we're signing it with our key store. I put in my password, okay, and password again, okay. And now I say where I want to save this, okay. And I, I'm going to copy that because I'm going to need to upload, in a, upload it in a minute. And now I choose finish. One side note is that while it's created this, we have to change our version number in the Android manifest before we create this APK because they, uh, the Google Play Store will not let us duplicate a duplicate version. Every time we upload a new version, we have to change that version code. You can get all the way through this process of creating an APK 
upload it to the Google Play Store, and then you forgot to change the version code, you have to do it all over again. Okay, so I am going to go to the, okay, I'm going to go to the Play Store now, and let's take a look. We're currently on 5.1. We're going to update this with version 6. It, the Play Store offers some very nice and very interesting uh, information. Okay, so I can go to statistics. I need to, up, now that I see this, I realize I need to update these graphical assets. Um, I can go into statistics for Plant Places Mobile. One moment. Click. And... I accidentally ended up navigating to the Play Store listing itself. If I click on statistics, I can see things like, uh, some very interesting things. I can see things like what version of the Android operating system people are using who have uh, Plant Places Mobile. And we see that a lot of them have 4.0 or greater, something in the 4 range. And that number is dramatically increasing. Um, but there are still 25% in the 2.3 range, and we can't ignore that audience. That's, that's, you know, every customer is very valuable to us. So we know what version the uh, users are, you know, what version of Android the users are on. If I click on app version, we can see what percent of people are on that version 2 that I created February 3rd, and what percent are on version 5 that I created February 26th. Both of those now about seven months ago. But even in that 20-some day window, there's still eight users who have that app and have not upgraded to the latest version. They might have upgrades turned off, automatic updates turned off. So, uh, you know, that worries me a bit because this means that's something I cannot control. I cannot control uh, a user who doesn't wish to upgrade the software. There are things in that software I knew I wish I did better. There are things in 5 I wish I did better, and I'm sure this release I'm about to make right now, there will probably some things be some things I wish I did better. What will be interesting is that it is, it's late on Friday, September 27th right now. I'm going to push this update out. It's probably going to take uh, about 24 hours before apps start updating this. So what will be interesting will be to come back to this video, revisit it later, maybe in a month, in a week, and see how many people got the automatic upgrade update to uh, version 6 that I'm about to deploy. Okay, so, uh, all right, so I'm going to go back to my APK. We'll go to our APK here, and it's easy as choosing upload new APK to production. Okay, and browse files. And remember earlier I said we wanted to remember where that APK was. Here's our APK. It was built today, just a few minutes ago when we started this video, uh, around uh, 10, uh, 10 p.m. in the evening. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to choose Open. And right now it's going to upload. Okay, so we're agreeing that we, uh, you know, that we have... There we go. What a relieving feeling to get it uploaded. Okay, there we go. Version 6, less than a megabyte. That's always good. Um, so now all I have to do is simply choose Publish to Production, and the more user-friendly version will now go. So I choose Publish to Production. Cross my fingers, hold my breath. Hope everything works well, of course. And Publish. And there we go. Okay. So version 6.1, now in production. And we see that 5.1 is, is now unpublished. So anybody who gets the app now will get the updated uh, version 6, which excites me very much because it has a lot of good new features. So there we go. Uh, and, and as I said, what we'll do now is we'll keep an eye on this page in the month to come, and we'll see how many users get the new version 6. Maybe we'll get some ratings and reviews. It's been a bit slow getting ratings and reviews on this so far. I have uh, quite a few users of the app. I mean over 100 users of the app, uh, not a whole lot of ratings. So I hope that this new, more user-friendly version will generate some more ratings. We will see. So uh, a couple other things we'll have, whoops, sorry. Uh, a couple other things we'll have here. It's interesting to see what device people are using. Okay, are they using a tablet? Uh, who's the manufacturer? 
country. This one gets me really excited to see people from other countries who have downloaded and, and used this app. Language, I offer native support for Spanish. And of course, I have no users who speak Spanish. The app version we already showed you. In the next uh, week or so, we'll probably see some version 6 there. And then also the carrier, Verizon on top, Sprint and AT&T, uh, they go back and forth on second position. And then Cincinnati Bell is in there as well, which isn't a big surprise because a lot of the users here are in the greater Cincinnati area. So uh, that's what we're going to see. And uh, that's all for this video. I will report back later and we'll see how this has gained traction. Thank you.